Hello, this is Barbara Fix and Rabbi Wall. Together with Goldie, we have a wonderful program ahead for you as we discuss Israel, the Middle East, developments, and there's a lot on the agenda. And of course, we always welcome uh, callers. If you call us on 914-636-0110, we always love to hear from you with your questions, uh, your discussions, any extra information. Uh, welcome uh, to Rabbi Wall, who we missed yesterday at an event at your temple. Rabbi Wall, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you, and I heard about the event and the great speaker and the truths that were brought forward. I'm very proud of you for all the good work you're doing and more to come. Yes, we had uh, at Temple Israel yesterday, and Goldie, you were with us. and it was Terrific very event. Good. Very, very well attended. We had Shurat Hadin. This is an exceptional, exceptional organization. So, Goldie, I'm going to jump in and talk about Shurat Hadin. And her organization, her who or- you know very well, because I think Nits- you've been yes. on a couple of trips to Israel. Yes, Nitzana Leitner is probably one of my greatest heroes. We all love to think about miracles, and uh, we talked about miracles uh, last week, the Passover miracle the, the march from uh, slavery to freedom to Israel, uh, and of course the miracle of Israel in 1948. Uh, but Israel's not really free because Israel is surrounded by terrorists, uh, armies and terrorists, and fights terrorism all the time. And one of the heroes is Natsana Leitner. And she is a young, gorgeous, beautiful woman she was a law student um, when I first heard about her and um, has gone on to build this incredible uh, organization, Bankrupting Terrorism, One Lawsuit at a Time. She's extremely knowledgeable about international law, and so she's, she's available to defend any families who've lost, um, lost family members to terrorism or have been injured by terrorists. And this is what she goes about. So she, her, 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 her mission is to stop money flowing to terrorists. Her, her view is that oxygen, that money is the oxygen of terrorism. Uh, for, op, for terrorists to operate, they need money for equipment, for training, for weapons, for personnel, and more. Uh, and um, so she goes off to the donors. She's gone on to banks. I know that one of her first projects was to close down the Arab Bank of New York for laundering money. A huge amount of money was going to terrorism. I think it was owned by the Jordanians at the time. There's no longer the Arab Bank in New York. She has also sued banks like UBS, the Lebanese Canadian Bank, American Express, uh, the Bank of China in Israel, which was laundering money in Gaza. Uh, And she's done an amazing job of that. She's also actually working with with uh, social media she at the moment has a a, a billion dollars a billion dollar uh, Facebook uh, lawsuit because she claims that Facebook knowingly provides material support to designated foreign terrorist organization Hamas which is in violation of US antitrust uh, law Uh, she claims that Facebook has aided and abetted Hamas for years by providing valuable and uh, services. For example, how do young terrorists know how to stab and do the most damage? And we're not only talking about in Israel, we're talking about what goes on everywhere in Europe, uh, in Belgium, in France, in England. These uh, young terrorists, they sometimes call them lone wolves, but as we know, this is a misnomer. There's no such thing as lone wolves. They all work together. They represent ISIS. They represent Hamas. They represent um, extreme Islam. And they learn how to take a knife, what kind of knife to buy, where to stab their victims, how to turn the knife to do the most damage and to kill. Uh, We know that there was a knifing uh, recently. There yesterday was a knifing yesterday. In yes. the hotel in Tel Aviv Beachfront. Exactly. There was in the Leonardo Beach Hotel uh, where a, a staff member working there was stabbed. She, she saw him coming towards her and then went after three three other people, uh, one on the beach. 
uh, he was he was apprehended and of course will go to go to prison once he's tried has has a fair trial in in Israel which we can't say in many of the other Middle Eastern countries. Uh, there was also a terrible terrorist attack in Jerusalem where a British uh, young girl, a non-Jewish girl, uh, who was studying in Israel, obviously getting a wonderful education in Israel, was stabbed to death uh, by an Arab on the train, on the light rail train, like a kind of above-ground metro. Um, and what she points out, one of the crazy things is that this woman, this British woman who got s- stabbed to death, I believe, uh, her uh, assailant, who is alive, will get a pension from the Palestinian Authority of $800, 800 pounds a month. And, you know, what's, what's truly crazy is that the British government provides the Palestinian Authority with $25 million a year in aid. So here's the British government providing funding to the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinians are providing you know, pensions for life to the families of all, uh, of all terrorists. Yeah, rewarding and, uh, rewarding the terrorists with British with British pounds. And I'm sure the same thing happens with the with Americans. We were just discussing there was a student at Vanderbilt University, ex uh, soldier in the American military who was visiting Israel and he got stabbed to death as well, I think, in, in Jaffa. And no doubt the American government spends hundreds of millions of dollars supporting the Palestinian Authority. And this is what Nitsan was talking about. We have to stop the incentives, particularly in Israel. We can't provide, apparently, Palestinian prisoners that are in jail every three years, they get promoted, their salaries increase. You know, for any lunatic Palestinian who wants to take care of his family, all you have to do is kill kill a Jew in Israel or kill a guest, and, and your family's taken care forever by the Palestinian Authority. There's no... There's no checks, there's no balances, there's no downside, and it, it's truly absurd. And I think this is one of the things that's on the agenda with the new Trump administration to make sure that this money and these incentives don't go to, into the wrong hands and provide the wrong incentives. Exactly. And uh, so, as we said, Natana Leitner, this young, gorgeous, exquisitely beautiful woman, lawyer, uh, spends her time trying to stop terrorism uh, almost single-handedly, she has a, a, a very small staff. Sometimes volunteer lawyers help her. She actually takes trips to Israel, so anybody who wants to join Nitsana Leitner uh, can go on one of her trips. She does a trip for lawyers with the hope that lawyers will do- donate some of their time to working with her and helping her, and she gets incredible responses, and she was inspirational. I think um, one of the things that shocked me yesterday at this uh, uh lunch Barbara was she gives that case study now she's gone to Facebook they've gone to the big social media uh, companies Mm -hmm. and said you know you really got to do something and they say no we can't and she says you can you know they got the algorithm as you said they know what time you wake up they know what time you have coffee they know what train you take they know everything so they know exactly what who's inciting and how to stop the the inciting uh, of 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 terrorism so what they did is they set up a, a test program. They set up two Facebook pages, one how to kill the Palestinian and one how to kill the Jew. And this was just a test program. And, every, and I, they went for a few days and they just amped up, you know, where to buy the knife, how to sharpen the knife, how to put poison on the knife, where to stab, how to stab. And each day they were just apping the ante. And then eventually Facebook did something. They shut down. And this is truly shocking. They shut down the, the, the website or the Facebook page about how to kill the Palestinian. But the page about how to kill the Israeli, how to kill a Jew, they left that standing. And on this basis, this, this double standard is, is going to be how, one of her points in her case against Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, so Zuckerberg, who's actually a Westchester native, I believe born in Ardsley, raised in Ardsley, uh, has a double standard. And it's about time that she sued him. I mean, a billion dollars in his pocket or out of his pocket is very little. Uh, But to victims of terror, uh, she's not doing this for herself. She's doing this on behalf of victims of terror who uh, were were killed or or stabbed because of Twitter and Facebook. Um, 
but she does amazing other things. She's filed a lien against Boeing for selling airplanes to Iran. Now, what happened, and, I, and, and I'm fairly familiar with it because um, I had someone very close to me in my family who was involved in freezing the assets of, of Iran uh, in the 1990s. And so there were frozen assets from Iran which should be used to pay the victims of terror. Uh, and she went uh, and she's going after the Boeing company, uh, which is selling planes to Iran and will be pocketing the profits. So we will be we're taking a break now. We will be back with the incredible work of Shurata Din and Natsana Leitner, an inspirational young woman. news at 20 past the hour. Here's the latest update from the Fox Business Network on 1460 WVOX. From the Fox Business Network, stocks are sharply higher on Wall Street following gains in Europe on increased expectations that France was not heading for an exit of the euro, with markets at their highest level in a month. And speaking of Europe, a survey shows that business confidence in Germany, Europe's biggest economy, is beating economists' expectations to rise to a six-year high as companies take a more optimistic view of their current situation. And the CEO of Qatar Airways, one of the Middle East's largest carriers, says passenger numbers flying to the U.S. have dipped over fears that they may have their visas rejected upon arrival. And after years of trailing behind, Mattel Hasbro surpassing the toy maker in revenue for the first time in 17 years. Hasbro Long, the smaller of the two main U.S. toy makers, posting strong quarters while Mattel continues to languish. Hasbro began to thrive after the global rights to develop dolls based on Disney Princess characters transitioned from Mattel to Hasbro last year. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Hilary Barsky. Are you taking Viagra for ED? Now you can get Sildenafil, the active ingredient in Viagra, and generic 20 milligrams for $2 per tablet. That's a savings of $40 per dose. Marley Drug is a North Carolina pharmacy delivering generic Sildenafil to your door. For information on Sildenafil, go to MarleyGenerics.com or call us at 800-452-1760. That's 1-800-452-1760. Sooner or later, somebody's going to blab it on WVOX. There's always something happening at 1460 on the radio. The voice of the people, where many different voices are heard in the land. WVOX. Hello, we're back with you, Barbara Fix, Rabbi Wall, and Goldie, and we're talking about, we're talking about the courage uh, to of, of Natsana Leitner to stand up to terrorism. But there, there are other heroes. Natsana Leitner is one of my heroes. We have another hero, Goldie, that you mentioned. Yeah, another, me. another, uh, uh, another woman hero. Uh, her name is Ayan Hersey Ali. Uh, there was an incredible article about a week or two ago on her in uh, the Wall Street Journal. She uh, has just recently published a new book called The Challenge Challenge of Dawa. And before we even get to what the Challenge of Dawa uh, means, we've got to give a bit of the background. Uh, she is a Somali uh, immigrant to, or slash refugee to Holland. And in Holland, she actually became a member of the Dutch parliament. She's obviously a Muslim. One of her friends was a relative of uh, Vincent van Gogh, uh, Theo van Gogh, who was uh, also a, a, a Dutch parliamentarian who was stabbed to death in a pretty shocking, blatant fashion, shot and stabbed in the middle of a street in Amsterdam. And that was because he was concerned about uh, Muslim immigration to Holland. And also genital mutilation. I remember at the time Rabbi Wall and I were doing the show and we were discussing how they were making a movie, innocently making a movie, about gentle mutilation and some of the damaging effects of Islam 
he was riding his bike and he got stabbed to death. And uh, she, of course, was in danger too. But sorry, I interrupted. Okay. No, no, ahead, please, Roddy. please interrupt. Uh, and while she was in Holland, there were a number of fatwas on her. She did get security from the Dutch police. They, unfortunately, after a couple of years, could not provide the security she needed, and, and she immigrated to the United States. Uh, I think she landed up at Harvard University, and she married uh, eminent British American historian Niall Ferguson. So a very powerful couple. She's now still involved with Harvard, but she's at the Hoover Institute in um, in Stanford, California. So she's being interviewed for the uh, Wall Street Journal. So she has a bodyguard standing outside her room, and she's in what's called a safe room in uh, Stanford. Now, this is crazy, but this is all true, uh, because there's still multiple fatwas on her on her head. She's published a book called Heretic, basically as one of those brave uh, leaders of Islam calling for reformation. Uh, she just published this 100-page short book called The Challenge of Dawah, which is, I think, aimed at the Trump administration um, to try explain what's really going on. And she says a lot of very, very, very interesting things. And I'm going to read some of the points uh, from this article. He, she describes Dawa as a ceaseless worldwide ideological campaign waged by M Islamists as a complement to jihad. Uh, and she says, in order to neutralize this, we need to have a comprehensive anti dawa strategy before it's too late. Today, she believes that Islam can indeed be reformed, it must be reformed, and that it can be reformed only by Muslims themselves, by those who she calls Mecca Muslims. In her book, Heretics, she divides uh, the world of Islam into two, she calls them Mecca Muslims and Medina, and Medina Muslims. Mm -hmm. And Muhammad was in Mecca, and that was the beginning of the, of the religion, and it was a peaceful, non-political religion. But when we went to Medina, he became a warrior, and he started a different uh, phase of Islam, or a different type of Islam. And this is what she sees as the yin and the yang between uh, the non-political Islam and the political Islam, which she calls Medina uh, Muslims. There are the faithful who prefer the gentler version of Islam that she says was originally promoted by Muhammad before 622 when he went to Medina. And now the Medina uh, sect or the Medina side of, of Islam is the political Islam. Um, she explains that uh, Dawah is conducted right under our noses in Europe and in America. It aims to convert non-Muslims to political Islam and also to push existing Muslims in a more extreme direction. She basically says this is a Trojan horse, uh, the, the Medina Muslims, who take advantage of Western tolerance. And she spends a lot of time quoting Karl Popper. Uh, you studied Popper as, yes. a, as, a, as a philosophy student. Yes. Is that correct, yes. Goldie? So you're yeah. an expert. Yeah, well, Karl Popper was one of the Austrian uh, philosophers uh, talking about the open society and its enemies. And he, there he wasn't thinking of Islam when he wrote the book, The Limits of Tolerance. He was thinking more of um, the Soviet Union and, and other kind of tyrannies, which, you know, uh, I and Hirsch Ali has, has seen as, as the basis. And, and, and she quotes from Karl Popper's book in 1945, if we extend unlimited tolerance even to those who are intolerant. If we are not prepared to defend a tolerant society against the onslaught of the intolerant, then the tolerant get destroyed and tolerance with them, which is, I think, you know, a metaphor for the times. You know, there, there seem to be jihadi columns all over France. We've seen incidents in Sweden, in Germany, in Holland. Um, and we don't want to look at them. That's Just, why we use the word lone wolf. But in fact, there are things that are happening. It's almost like a stealth political takeover, if you call it the Medina days. Rabbi Wall actually had studied a lot about Muhammad, and we used to talk about the, the Mecca days and then the vicious 
Medina days where he just slaughtered tribes, beheaded the men, took the women as slaves, uh, took young girls as his, as his uh, wives or concubines or whatever. Um, but we, you talk about Dawa, there's, there's the, the, Im- the push to immigrate to Western countries, Immigrate, but not, but to avoid integration. But, but what she says, mm-hmm. it's, it's very subtle and it's very complicated to understand. He says the West is concerned with terrorists. Oh, he's a terrorist, and then was he a lone wolf? What was his motive? Maybe he's just crazy. Maybe he didn't like gays. Maybe there's no comprehensive, hol- holistic uh, strategy. And she says we shouldn't focus on terrorism. We should focus on the ideology. And we're going to need to have a counter ideology. She says, what the Islamists call jihad, we call terrorism. So, like, we're all uh, focused on ISIS. And, and, and she, her point would be that ISIS, you know, if we if we destroy ISIS, somebody else will come in its place. You know, ISIS is just, you know, if, K, if Al-Qaeda is Microsoft 1.0, then ISIS is Microsoft 2.0. And when that's gone, there's going to be... 3.0, which will be worse. And we've got to start working on the ideology, which is the Reformation. And that's her focus. We're going to take a break now and continue because that's very interesting because I was just reading about someone else who's trying to condemn the, the, the wise words of, of, um, of Ayan Hirsi Ali. We'll be back with you and please call us with your questions. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. With world and national news, here is the latest update from Fox News Radio on 1460 WVOX. Fox News Radio, I'm Paul Stevens. Police in Dallas converging earlier today after reports of an active shooter in an office building. With this Betty Bowen working on the 10th floor. They had the shields and everything up and the SWAT was everywhere on our floor. However, the shooter's on the 7th floor. He shot out the window, if you can see it behind us, in the uh, far left corner, far right corner. He shot the window out and he barricaded himself in there. Now reports saying two people were shot in the building. One report saying the shooter has died. Former President Barack Obama returning to the public stage earlier today, touching in part on the state of American politics. When you talk to individuals one-on-one, people, there's a lot more that people have in common than uh, divides them. The former president speaking at the University of Chicago. Fox News, we report, you decide. Between the junk you've accumulated and purged and the waste generated from everyday living, you need to rely on your trash removal service to get the job done. You deserve honesty. You expect reliability. You need CRP Sanitation. Since 1979, CRP Sanitation has been the trash removal company homeowners, business owners, and contractors have depended on for honest, reliable service. No dispatchers in different locations who don't know you. No answering services. CRP employees answer the phones, and they know their customers by name. Communication is a key to their success. Communication with you. Other companies offer the world and never deliver. CRP Sanitation offers exactly what you get. Honesty, dependability, professionalism. Doing some remodeling? CRP Sanitation can estimate the weight and needs of a dumpster. And that means not paying more than you need or having to add additional services at additional costs. Not all trash companies are created equal. Family-owned CRP Sanitation. Westchester's finest in sanitation. Call 592-4129. 592-4129. Be sure to listen to Take Control of Your Future. Friday mornings at 9.30. Host Rosemary Camus will introduce experts in all areas of downsizing or aging in place. Focusing on your home, your estate plan, your health care, finances, and more. That's Friday mornings at 9.30 for Take Control of Your Future. Right here on 1460 WVOX and WVOX.com. Steve Pelletieri's Eye on Weather is brought to you on WVOX by Energy and the Indian Point Energy Center. Right for New York. Here's your weather forecast for Westchester on your Monday. A cloudy day today. Might be a few sprinkles or drizzle here and there. Temperatures between the upper 50s and lower 60s. For tonight, occasional light rain, drizzle, and fog. 
Nighttime lows of 43 to 48. Periods of rain drizzle and fog on Tuesday. Our highs for the day only 50 to 55. More rain likely at night. Temperatures holding steady in the 50s. Wednesday, a chance of some rain in the morning, some showers in the afternoon, 66 for a high. Thursday, mostly sunny, 72. I'm Indy Ron, Justine Pelletieri for 1460 WVOX. At Indian Point, we've helped power Westchester and New York City for about four decades. Recently, as part of an agreement with New York State, we are working toward an early and orderly shutdown of the facility by 2021. Until then, we'll continue safely generating about 25% of the reliable, round-the-clock electricity that powers the city and Westchester, all with virtually no greenhouse gas emissions. Safety is, as it always has been, the top priority for everyone at the plant. We will continue to keep Indian Point fully staffed, and full-time inspectors from the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission will monitor our daily operations. We'll also continue to play an important role in our community, as a taxpayer and active participant in local charities. Indian Point Energy Center is still working for you, and it's our honor to continue to serve the people of New York. If you have questions about our ongoing operations, please visit safesecurevital.com. The Eastern Establishment's hometown station, 1460 WVOX. Hello, this is Barbara Fix, Rabbi Wall, and Goldie. We're talking about what's happening in the Middle East, about Israel. Uh, we actually it's, uh, started the conversation with very uh, talking about very two very powerful women, very positive. We spoke about Natsana Leitner, and we were talking about Ayan Hersey Ali. And uh, you had a few more comments yeah, I to mean, make. I mean, it's, 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 it's very complex stuff. It's, it's very subtle, but there's a terrific article in the Wall Street Journal, and it's talking about her new book uh, about Dawa. Uh, which is the, the political version of Islam's war against the West. And she says, our strategy to date has basically been as simple as whack-a-mole. She says, sometimes the enemy is right in front of us. Uh, these are the Islamists, or the political Islamists, who have access to all the Western institutions of socialization. And some of them are much closer than we think. We were discussing yesterday at this event uh, with uh, Nistana Leitner, and we said, well... The bomb administration is thinking, and the and the and the pressure is coming from the Egyptians that they would like to declare the, the Trump administration. The Trump administration, they'd like to declare the Muslim Brotherhood uh, a, a terrorist entity, and then how would that affect CARE, which is the the Council on American Islamic Relations, which is the umbrella group for all you know American Islamic relations in America? And she actually mentions CARE as being one of the Trojan horses. So she says, you know, Islam, the religion, in, 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 in her view, is a Trojan horse that conceals Islamism, the political movement. And she actually names CARE as one of those fronts. But groups like CARE, she says, take advantage of the focus of, inc okay, of inclusiveness by progressive political bodies in our democratic society. So that's uh, Ayan Hurs Ali. Before we jump into some other things, we have a question from Frank. Thank you, Frank. Come in. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon uh, to you. Um, Barack Obama is the disaster that keeps on giving. His, his holdovers in the State Department last week released a, a report that said that Iran is living up to all the terms of the nuclear agreement. Tillerson had to be marched out the next day to say this is absolutely false. They're not, and I don't know all the particulars. I'm not an alchemist. But I know as far as their centrifuges and spinning and the uh, 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 cake, I, I forget what it's called, some kind of cake, uh, that they're not complying with what they're supposed to comply with. And Bibi Netanyahu had to point this out, that it's an absolute disaster, this deal. And, th and then Trump, I guess, got the truth of the matter, and Tillotson was forced to come out and say they're not living up to any part of this bargain. They're the greatest exporters of terrorism in the world. Uh, uh, second, uh, I don't think they're second to ISIS. I think ISIS is second to them. They're the ones who sent uh, their their, their uh, uh, troops into uh, into Iraq to set IEDs against American soldiers and those Iraqi forces fighting with the Americans. It was the Iranians' Quds Force that did that. 
and 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 uh, this Barack Obama and his minions uh, then sit down and say we can do business with these people. They ship money and arms to Syria and through Syria to Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, all the rest. They're, the, they're the greatest terrorist network in the world. Frank, and Barack we, Obama's telling us we, that Frank, we can do business with them. Barbara and I sitting here, we are nodding our heads. We agree with you, and, and you are surprisingly well informed, and you're right on the money. And I think, I don't know the exact number, but I think over 5,000 American soldiers died in Iraq. And but, as you pointed out, yeah. most of those were killed by IEDs. Absolutely. Made and designed in, in Iran uh, and deployed by Shiite militias or Absolutely. Kurds force or Iranian revolutionary guards. And yes, ISIS is a problem. But as Tillerson pointed out, the bigger problem is Iran. And we agree. We couldn't agree with you more. And yeah, Iran has a state. They own. They have a country to to uh, operate out of. That's what makes them that much more dangerous. We and agree. The day, the day that the North Koreans have a missile technology that can reach the United States, the next day Iran will have it. And you know what was interesting at this uh, lunch that Barbara helped to organize yesterday with Nitsan Leitner? She pointed out there are links between. Uh, North Korea, uh, Iran, and his bullet. I don't know. Do you remember some of the specific points you mentioned, Barbara? Absolutely. She said that for the longest time, uh, North Korea has been helping and assisting Hezbollah. So uh, you remember that term that was used, the axis of evil? It was used by the, the younger Bush. And he was right on the money. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and that axis I'm glad of evil. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. and, and do you remember in this deal, before the ink was dry, that I can't think of his name, but the head of the Quds Force was not supposed to be able to travel internationally. With, before the ink was dry, he was in Russia. Yeah, the name, is the, the name of the guy is General Suleiman, and he's, Suleiman. Been, he's been in Damascus, and he's been coordinating uh, Hezbollah. Uh, Iranian militia and El Quds force in the defense of the Assad regime and the city of Damascus. So. And this is also in violation of the agreement. There is, let's face it, there is no agreement. Let's just blow the thing up and forget about it. Well, and I hope Donald Trump does that. Well, and know. and puts the sanctions. And if the Europeans don't want to be with us, we'll put the sanctions on our on our own. And and believe me, internationally finance doesn't happen unless the United States is willing to cooperate with that finance. And it's even more complicated, Frank, because um, uh, several years ago, the rabbi and I talked about Iranian influence in Venezuela. Um, you know, the forests of Venezuela, we don't know what kind of enriched uranium. We don't know what's in those forests, but we do know that flights uh, are going between Iran and Venezuela. What frightened me to take it the next step was the closest relationship between Venezuela was with Cuba. Yeah. So there you have a, a, the relationship between Venezuela and Cuba, and then we, 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 uh, we kind of kosher Cuba, and we have flights going from Cuba into the United States of America. Yeah, well, that's, they, that's, pr that's pretty frightening for us as citizens they, who, who realize we don't know what's coming in, what could be on planes, you know, dirty bombs we've heard about. We don't know how, how safe we are, but I Iran is certainly... They, this, it, this is starting to remind me of the uh, early 30s when the Western world was complacent and said, oh, well, we can deal with these folks. We'll be able to deal and negotiate with these folks. You can't negotiate with these people. They want to see an end to the civilization that we live in, and they want their civilization to come to the fore. We better start understanding that. And I hope the French are smart enough to put Le Pen in and not this clown who's nothing but a stooge of Obama. Well, we don't know, but we don't know, but uh, but thank you for your astute thank observations. You. We appreciate thank, that, thank Frank. You, thank you, Frank. Um, okay, I think we're moving closer to home now, domestically, what's going yes, on, Barbara? Yes, yes. Well, Goldie, you know, you were talking about Ayan, uh, Ayan Hersi, uh, Ali. Ayan Hersi, Ali, and, 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 and what disturbs me is the darling of the liberals, the darling of the, of, the, of, of, the, of, the, of the of the and the of democratic the party democratic this. party you can't understand the democratic party because you just don't understand what in fact they are thinking when they elevate someone like this woman Linda Saucer who by the way has been known to have praised child terrorism on social media so she's pro she's she, she, she's a Palestinian she, activist that's uh, I think one of the key coordinators of all the women's marches in the United States the last few months. 
Yeah. She was best friends with uh, Hassan Ras Oda. So no, who, Ras who's Ras Linda? Mia, and who's, Ras Mia Ode. who's yeah. Ras Mia and who's L Linda, Barbara? Uh, Linda Sasso, she's an anti-Zionist, anti-Israel, Sharia law advocate. She's actually been invited, I kid you not, to give a commencement speech at a CUNY graduate school of public health and public policy uh, coming up the beginning of June. Now, I mean, the irony of it, everybody should be writing to complain and ask her to resign because if she praises terrorist murderers, um, including her friend, the terrorist Rasmia Oder, who I believe has just been uh, sent out of the United States of America for lying on immigration papers. Uh, but this is going to be continued because the college campuses are rife with major problems that threaten us. So we'll take a break now. Call us at 636-0110. We'll be back on this wonderful program with Rabbi Ann Goldie. and national news. Here is the latest update from Fox News Radio on 1460 WVOX. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. President Trump still pushing for lawmakers to include money for a border wall as they work to meet a spending bill deadline. Democrats hope he'll back down to avoid a partial shutdown that would start on Saturday, President Trump's 100th day in office. One possibility, a short-term spending plan that would provide another week or so for negotiations after the deadline early Saturday. Fox's John Decker, former President Obama in his first public appearance since leaving office, telling University of Chicago students about what he learned early on as a community organizer. Beneath the surface differences of people, that there were common hopes and common dreams and common aspirations, uh, common values. The university will be the site of President Obama's presidential library. Reports from Dallas of a shooting in a downtown office building has left two people wounded. There's one report the gunman has died. Fox News, we report, you decide. This is the sound of a brand new outdoor grill being hurled off a 20-story building. Now a stylish glass coffee table. An electric guitar. These are the things you could enjoy all cast into oblivion. Because when you throw away money on wasted electricity, you throw away everything you could have bought with it. Visit energysavers.gov and get tips on how to save energy and money. Then do things like switch to Energy Star light bulbs or Energy Star appliances, and you could save hundreds of dollars a year. So this doesn't happen to the recliner you've had your eye on, or this to the treadmill on your wish list, or this to the shiny new bike your kid's been asking for. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Hey, hey, hey! My dad is bringing home the best birthday cake ever! It was my fifth birthday, and my dad was bringing home the cake. Should have been here a half hour ago. The cake never made it, and neither did my dad. 911, what's your emergency? That was the day a drunk driver killed my dad. Daddy? Impaired drivers take lives. Think. Sponsored by the New York State Governor's Traffic Safety Committee. Aired in cooperation with the New York State Broadcasters Association. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 after 8 in the morning, we invite you to listen to Wartburg Moment, where in 60 seconds you can hear what Wartburg Senior Care can offer. And Wartburg Senior Care offers a great deal. Wartburg Moment is simply a way to briefly tell you what a great difference a community of hope and of healing can make in one's life. Wartburg Moment will bring you information on compassionate senior care, independent living, and integrated senior care services. You will hear in these weekly moments all about Meadowview Assistant Living and, of course, spiritual care. You will learn that senior living at Wartburg in their beautiful landscape grounds is quite wonderful. You'll hear about Wartburg's great care 
offered at their award-winning nursing home and new rehabilitation center. So listen every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 after 8 in the morning to Wartburg's Moment and hear what you really need to know about Wartburg Senior Care. It's 60 seconds well worth listening to. Be sure to listen to WVOX Local News early mornings on Good Morning Westchester, brought to you exclusively by Trustco Bank. Need a mortgage? Think Trustco Bank for great savings with no PMI, no tax escrow, and no broker's fees. For more details, go to TrustCoBank.com. Trustco Bank, your hometown bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Sooner or later, somebody's going to blab it on WVOX. There's always something happening at 1460 on Westchester's only local station. WVOX. Hello, Barbara Fix, Rabbi Wall and Goldie. We're having a wonderful conversation today. Uh, We were talking about what's happening on college campuses, which is a big problem for our kids We have to worry about what the next generation is going to endure because we're seeing things that are not happy on college campuses. We're talking about Linda Saucer, a promoter of terrorism uh, uh, and an anti-Israel, anti-Zionist, Sharia law advocate, uh, a friend of a terrorist, a known terrorist, Rasmi Odeir, who was imprisoned for killing people. Uh, She murdered some students. And uh, Linda Sasser is being honored by CUNY, I kid you not. Um, And in fact, Linda Sasser has advocated that Ayan Hersi Ali and my special friend Brigitte Gabriel should be maimed for their opinions and their discussion of Islam. So to continue the the theater of the absurd, we've just shown that Linda Sasser is like the darling uh, of the Democratic Party and the liberal left, while Ayan Hurst Ali, who's actually making the most sense out of anybody in, in, in the Muslim world, has a fatwa on her head and has security at Hoover Institute, and she's a, she's a famous publisher. But to continue to the theater of the absurd, you know, I was just reading yesterday that Yale University is going to grant the Gandhi, that's the Mahatma Gandhi, Peace Award to BDS founder Omar Bhaguti, not to be confused with uh, Mawan. Mawan Baguti, but we'll get to that in a few seconds. So, uh, who is Omar Baguti? He, he's an Israeli Arab citizen. Uh, he lives in Accra, which is just south of Haifa. And he founded BDS, that's Boycott, Divest, and Sanction. And he said a few marvelous things. Israel has no right to exist. The IDF shoots Palestinian children purely for sport. And he also accuses Israel of scholasticide claiming Israel is destroying Palestinian education, although this guy got his PhD at Tel Aviv University. I mean, you just simply can't make this up. Right. It's it's abuse. It's abuse. Take what you can. Take what you can get. Take a college degree uh, and your education and free medical from Israel and then turn it against and make up lies. And And, you know... But what does it say about... uh, What does it say about Yale? What does it say about dishonoring a peace prize um, which should not be awarded to, to a bds uh, a hateful man like Omar Baguti? And what does it say about Palestinian education? He has Israeli universities. So I think you've got, you know, per capita more Nobel, peace, no, more Nobel prizes than any other, uh, uh, barring the United States in the world. And Palestinian education... Uh, which I'm not too sure about, but we know, as we discussed before, a big part of the education is is teaching, you know, that Israel doesn't exist, you know. I think Israel initially banned him from traveling because he's actually a, a tax uh, evader. Uh, I think he owes a fortune in taxes to Israel and just was evading taxes. So again, epicenter and of selfishness. Take what you can get, refuse to pay your taxes, your fair taxes, and then you want to travel? Anyway, Israel's been persuaded to allow him to travel to Yale. I'm not sure why. Uh, uh, Truly unbelievable. But let's also be very clear about what is BDS and what's the real aim of BDS. The real aim of BDS is to bring down the state of Israel. And it's unfortunate that many, you know, liberal Jewish groups, particularly on campuses, are supporting BDS. Absolutely shocking to me. Um, And that quote about bring down the state of Israel is, 
quoted by the professor of political science at the University of California by a gentleman called Assad Abu Kal. I'm not sure who he is or what he is, but that's what he said. So another Trojan horse. So these people are particularly dishonest and they take advantage, as we're saying, of Western tolerance, of Western society. Uh, and in many of these cases, they have more rights here than they have in their own countries, you know. But coming back to campus is another thing that I just saw. We've just we just passed uh, Passover is both uh, Tuft University and Claremont, which is one of the top universities in California, both passed anti-BDS uh, resolutions actually on the first day of Passover when An- many anti- Jewish students... Anti or pro-BDS? Pro, pro-BDS. Pro, pro-BDS, pro-BDS. Pro-BDS. On the first day of Passover, when many Jewish students were traveling and, and couldn't, couldn't be vote. there because it was first night. That's, de- that's deceitful and despicable. Yeah. But... Before we leave, we should come back to our other Barghouti, Marwan Barghouti. So uh, a week ago today, the New York Times published a a, a material significant op-ed page written by Marwan Barghouti, uh, and he was going on about Israel and the Palestinians and the apartheid state. He's a known terrorist. Yeah. Marwan is a known terrorist. I think he killed 37 people. Well, New York Times never mentioned that. They never mentioned that this op-ed piece was written in a prison cell in Israel and that he's there on four consecutive life-term sentences and that he actually was involved in not only as being the head guy for Al-Fatah in the West Bank, but for uh, also actually being specifically, personally involved in murdering a whole bunch of people. So that did create a stir and there was some kind of uh, I think, acknowledgement from the New York Times. But, I mean, absolutely shocking that they, they try to launch the story without explaining who Marwan Boguti is. Right. Well, Rabbi Wall and I have been saying again for years about the New York Times, uh, that they print whatever they want, all the inaccuracies. Uh, they then get hauled over the coals, whether it's by Committee for Accuracy in the Middle Eastern Reporting, uh, in America, CAMERA, C-A-M-E-R-A, which monitors everything because they know the New York Times cannot be trusted. And then the New York Times puts a tiny little two little line apology on page 29. Correct. Hoping that no one's going to see the... the uh, so they make these accusations and, and, and uh, the New York Times is basically becoming more of a tabloid which cannot be trusted. You really have to sort through things. And, uh, you know, it was, was interesting. I was, I was watching uh, Bibi Netanyahu was being interviewed by Sean Hannity in Israel uh, on uh, Friday evening. And, you know, what, what Bibi Netanyahu said, it's very important for the Palestinian Authority to say in Arabic to their people what they agree in English. And there's a lovely little organization called Palestinian Media Watch actually looks to find the discrepancies about what they, you know, they speak out of both sides of their mouth. There's one thing in English. And there's another thing in Arabic, and also some of the words that they use have double meanings as well. There's, there's, a, there's hadna, which means a temporary peace, uh, but not a real peace. And you can shake hands, not in the Western Judea sense, but in an Arabic, Middle Eastern, Oriental sense. And you can change your mind when, you've, when your tummy's full or when your short, sword is sharper. But they pointed out that uh, Fatah basically says at the moment, you know, all those who still... Uh, drinking the Kool-Aid, real, read the two-state solution, Fatah and Hamas agree Israel has no right to exist. Uh, at this moment, Fatah does not recognize Israel, and the new Hamas leader said, our principles say that our land is all of Palestine, including the land that is under, under occupation, i.e. Israel. Talk about establishing a state in the West Bank and Gaza. It's just, temp- it's just a tactical step. So I repeat, there's no such thing as a two-state solution. That was a dream a while back, several years ago, uh, but that can never be again. So I think people should just wake up. Uh, It's misnomer. There's no such thing as two states. There cannot be two states. There's one state. It's Israel. Israel will continue to provide education, medical, for all its people, whether they be Christian, Armenian, um, Greek, uh, Turkish, whoever is in Israel, we have Filipinos in Israel, we have Africans in Israel, uh, and Muslims, and Israel is the most democratic country, uh, as democratic as the United States, if not more so, because they have to be extra specially careful, and um, 
And we're going to have to continue to monitor universities like uh, Berkeley. We didn't even get to Berkeley uh, with and Coulter. And uh, Middlebury, uh, uh, which had uh, uh, people attacked uh, like Milo Yiannopoulos and uh, Murray and uh, college campuses. Uh, there's a war on college campuses, and we need to well, monitor it that. that. It seems that the good people are certainly losing the war, I mean, from what I can read. I mean, you know, Yale, which is probably the, the one or two top universities in the country, and if they're giving uh, the founder of BDS the Mahatma Gandhi Award, I mean, just, I find that absolutely crazy and absurd. Right. And, and you know, one looks at things like the United Nations. I mean, one would expect that to be a respected well, place. thank God for Nikki Haley. So, uh, we, Goldie, I thank you. I thank Rabbi Wall, all you good people who call us. Thank you, Frank, and thank you for any of our other callers. Call us in. We need to keep this world safe for future generations. Uh, we have our vets who fought for us, kept this country safe, and we thank WVOX for the opportunity to make good things happen in the future. Thank you so much.